Amen, amen. Well, welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. I am glad that you're here with us in the sanctuary as well as those that are joining us online. This is going to be a, a, uh, a night of a review from on, on Sunday. I felt that today that I needed to kind of uh, fill in some gaps uh, that I didn't uh, kind of close on Sunday. So uh, we're going to spend a little time tonight talking about stewardship and uh, revisiting some things and uh, perhaps uh, uh, again digging down a little further uh, in the word. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for the privilege that we have to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Father, for the work of the Holy Spirit as he works with the hearer. I thank you, Father, that he, the Holy Spirit, will give them revelation knowledge of their current space, time, and whatever they're dealing with, and be able to work that thing together for their benefit through your word. That they will be uh, uh, capable of knowing that it's you at work in their lives. And so I honor and thank you, Father, in advance for what you're going to do amid your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right. So, so um, uh, again, tonight I, I want to I wanna kind of uh, work my way um, uh, through Sunday and last uh, Wednesday, or I should say uh, previous Wednesdays. And um, I want to be able to tie in chapter number 16 of Romans um, with uh, 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 the, the stewardship just to show uh, how that uh, people along the way in the things of God have been faithful uh, to honor God and to work on behalf of God in his kingdom so that we could get the benefit, okay? That you and I get the benefit. Now, how, how does that happen? That happens as a result of you and I uh, living today being able to read the Bible and the stories of the Bible because people lived before us and they didn't just live but they lived in a way they honored God and that you and I can read about their lives, their story and their relationship with God and receive the benefit of being in relationship uh, with, uh, with them through, through our lives as Christians. That's, that's what God is requiring of us. He's requiring that you and I uh, live lives that reflect him so that others may gain the benefit of the life that we, that we live. Not that we live life unto ourselves, but that we steward our lives in a way that it can be a blessing to, to others. Uh, our definition of stewardship is to, for us as stewards, managers, is to utilize and manage all resources uh, that God provides for the glory of God, not for our glory, but for the glory of God and the betterment of his creation. That's, that's important for all of us to, to grasp that is, is utilizing and managing all resources that God provides for his glory so that he, through our uh, gifts and talents and means, uh, can better humanity. That should be our goal. Our goal in our generation uh, should be to live a life, use all the resources that God has given us, time, talent, and means, to the glory of God so that it betters humanity. That's our responsibility to, to do so. We, we gave you these uh, focuses that are important to um, uh, organizing your life. Uh, my wife will tell you I'm the person that lives by organization. I believe in organization. The church folks will tell you that I believe in organization. I believe uh, people ought to have duties and responsibilities. It ought not be something in your head. It ought to be written down and, uh, so that when you write it down, you hold each other accountable. And um, So I believe in, in, in organization, and it happens to be a tool that I apply uh, to my own life. This, this, this three G's is a sense of organization. It's, it's being able to sit with your life and ask yourself, how focused am I at this period in my life, this stage and season in my life, how focused am I on, on my relationship with God, my relationship with the goals that I have for my life, and the growth, my relationship with my own personal growth. That's, that takes evaluation for this particular season of your life. 
How focused am I on, my, on God, goals, and growth? How focused am, am I on that? The next part of that uh, uh, gives us uh, how we can use our resources to better focus on God, focus on our goals, and to focus on our growth. So how can I use the time that God has allotted me to uh, 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 focus on, on uh, uh, my life? How, how can I use the, the talents and the gifts that God has given to me uh, to, to focus on, you know, perhaps my goals that I'm trying to achieve uh, in life? And, and then how do I use the, the resources, my, uh, my means, uh, in order to carry out God's divine will uh, for me and the people that he sends in, 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 my, uh, in my world? How do I do that? How do I, how do I put feet to that? Okay. And the first thing, you, of course, you know, you, you, you have to be a person of organization in order to even have value for such things, to have value for getting up every day, I'm focusing on God. Now, that's going to that's put me in a posture of prayer. It's going to put me in a posture of studying and reading that word every day. And when I say studying and reading, that's, you know, that comes... Uh, in, in various ways, whether you're reading the, your book Bible or you're listening to it. You know, I always like to tell people that because, you know, every now and then I read my book Bible or I read my, uh, you know, I'm on my phone from the Bible, but the majority of the time I get my word by actually listening to it. Got it? So it comes in various forms as, as you start talking about the word. But uh, when, you, when you start talking about relationship with God, I have to have something that drives me there. And if I'm working on my relationship with God every day, it's going to drive you to the place where you want to be in the place where God is. And that's in prayer, in the worship time, all that, that is required in, in that, uh, that experience with, with God. Now, I want to be able to fill in. So when you start talking about time, talents, and means and your, your, uh, your resources that, that God has given you, uh, we now have to, uh, number one, first thing I want to talk about is uh, all things are of God, okay? All things are of God. The, the, the right perspective is important. The right perspective is important. On the, uh, on the screen behind me, this is, uh, uh, these are uh, pillars, that, uh, a picture of pillars of creation is what the, um, um, those who study the cosmos uh, call them. But this is, this is a picture taken by um, uh, uh, space telescopes, right, to uh, where people have gone back from what they call the beginning of creation, and they show us this picture of what it looks like from the very, very beginning of, of time in and of itself. Um, and uh, uh, so I thought it would be good to kind of bring this out uh, as we talk about everything belonging to God, even the picture of those pillars of creation belong to God. Everything, no matter, no matter how far uh, a telescope can go out in space, it all belongs to God. So sometimes, sometimes when we're, we're sitting in a church space or maybe we're riding in our car or whatever we're doing you know, with our lives and, and someone starts talking about how God owns everything and the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, you need to be able to identify not only hearing it from words and a, you know, a sermon or a teaching, but when you, when you get ready to Google and, and, and you, you, you see a picture come up, you ought to be able to relate that picture to God's creation rather than, oh, that's just a beautiful picture of outer space. No, that is, that is a picture of God's hand at work at some point in time. Now, what I just said is pretty heavy. That is a picture of God's hand at work at some point in time. It might have been five trillion years ago, or it might have been 10,000 years ago. Uh, we don't know that full story, but what we do know is that, that those who are in the sciences and in research, they have gone out and taken beautiful pictures of, of the creation of God. Now, uh, uh, the psalmist wasn't there but the psalmist in relationship understood this. And perhaps our culture today don't quite understand it, but I think if it's, if it's explained better, if, if we, we give God all that God deserves uh, uh, through and by creation, we'll get to a better space in, 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 our, in our walk with God. So in Psalms 24, 
which is a scripture that I read two weeks ago, that kind of helps you to be able to see this in a different light. In Psalms number four, listen to what it says. It says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and, and all that dwell therein. He, God, founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Now, that's your Old Testament scripture. Now, over in Colossians chapter number one, uh, verse 16 to uh, 18, it says it like this. For by him were all things created that are things in heaven and in earth, visible and invisible. See, you and I would have never ever seen in our living lifetimes this beautiful picture uh, uh, of, 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 of creation uh, had somebody not taken a picture of it in deep space, okay? That would have been invisible to us. So just because we can't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't belong to God. Does that make sense? Okay, so he goes on and he says it's visible and invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and, listen carefully, for him. All things were created by him and all things were created for him. Now, wrapping our mind around that and settling ourselves in with that gives us right perspective. Now, when, 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 when challenges come up in, in, in the educational system, and challenges comes up in religious systems, and challenges comes up in, 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 at the barbecue for 4th of July under the shade tree, or it comes up in social media spaces, you as a Christian can now go to Psalm 24. And you can go over to Colossians and you're able to defend what you believe rather than just believing it. Now you're able to defend what you believe because now you're able to understand, hey, God created it all. Because you're going to have somebody come behind you and says, you know, it all started through a big bang, right? So the big bang did this. From, from, your, from your world view, as a Christian, you, you, you can't be a banger. You can't be a big banger. It's, it's creation. Now, did Chris creation start with a bang? I don't know. Maybe it was a bang. But I know who was behind the bang. Got it? See? All things were made by him and for him. They were made by him and they were made for him. It's, it's great to understand that, okay? All right. Now, now I'll, let me see. Verse 17. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. The word consist there means is made up of, is made up of him. All things are made up of him. Verse 18, and he is the head of the body, that is the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he, God, might have the preeminence. What is that? The superiority. The preeminence, the, the superiority that we don't see God just as a being, we see him as the supreme being. That he is, that separates us from him. He is not like a man, as Numbers says. He's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He is, God is not like us. Does that make sense? Okay, so grabbing hold of that now puts us in right space. That God created all things, and all things were created by him and for him. And in that, when he sent us to the planet, he already prepared every resource you would need to carry out his purpose. He, he owns it all. Psalm it says, a cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord. He owns it all. And whatever resource you need to carry out his purpose, it's going to be God giving it to you. Now, that sounds wonderful, that sounds awesome. The problem is, is if you are uh, a unjust steward and you're unfaithful in your stewardship, you will abuse the resources that he give you. Got it? And in abusing the resources, it's always gonna be me-centered. Me, 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 me. It's gonna be selfish-driven and at the end of the day, you're going to use everything that God gave you for the wrong purpose. That's what I'm trying to help you not to do. That's what I'm trying to help you to grow from, away from, I should say, to grow away from centeredness in yourself, trying to uh, stack up accolades among men 
when our responsibility is to take everything that God has given us and use it as a source by which God can be glorified, edified, and praised for the work that he does through us. Okay? All right. So that's what we're going to uh, be working on tonight. So first of all, all things are of God and all things are for him. Okay? All right. So the, the, the next thing I want to talk to you about is uh, spend time growing your relationship with God. Spend time doing this. Spend time. Spend time. That, that uh, uh, little small plant you see uh, uh, the father and the daughter uh, planting here is going to take some cultivation. That, that plant is not going to have great success. It'll have some success, but it's not going to have the great success uh, that is desired if somebody don't show up every day and cultivate. Somebody has to show up every day often enough to be able to cultivate that plant. Somebody has to do it. The, the thing is, the young girl is excited about it. But she doesn't know what's really required to cultivate. That means that dad's got to spend time with daughter and dad and daughter got to spend time with the plant. See how it works? You have to spend time. You can't just say, I'm saved, born again, I'm, I'm, I'm headed to heaven. But you're not going to see results here on this planet if you're not spending time with God. Now, I want you to know, I want you to know, out of these 40, 40 years of being saved, I know many people that got saved same time, same era that I got saved, and they lived miserable lives. They lived, they lived, the sinner and them as Christians lived the same life. They got the same outcomes. And I want you to know the difference is that I get up every day and spend time with God. Not just, not just, getting, the, just getting up, but throughout the day, spending time with God. You say, Pastor, you don't do no work? Yeah, I do work. In my work is spending time with God. I, all things are made by him and for him. So no matter what you do with your life, if you're a Christian and you grab hold of growing your relationship with God, no matter if you're sitting there composing a letter, no matter what you're trying to say to the person to correct their behavior, the Holy Ghost is going to show up and say, make sure you say this right. So he's even in writing the letter. Otherwise, you live unto yourself. You, I mean, you, you know how that works. You, you sub to say anything. Anything that causes for you to have to apologize later or, 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 or recant what something that you said that uh, you were not in the right frame of mind to, to visit. You see, it's not just showing up every day to pray and, and, and as, as the old church, be on bended knees for, you know, 35, 40 minutes. No, no, I'm, I'm talking beyond that. Yes, that is a part of prayer and fellowship and time with God, but I'm talking about making it a, a, a life, not a lifestyle, that'll change, but making it a way of life so that you, you're living this every day so that you can see the yielded results that you're looking for. I will tell you, I, I, I have not been one day dissatisfied with God. I have not been one day dissatisfied with God because every day, getting up, spending that time with God, man, going about my day every day, to honor God and to please God with my life because my life, as, as, as Paul said, my life is no longer my own, but my life now is hid with Christ in God that I am dead, I have died, I have died. That's why I got baptized, to symbolize that I've died out of the old notion of this world and I came up out of the water, resurrected into the kingdom of God. So now all I have to do is get going and start living that way and living that way, living that way, living that way and I'm going to see the results as a result of living that, that way, okay? All right, now, Ecclesiastes, chapter number nine, verse number 10. And uh, remember that anytime you, you turn over to the Old Testament and uh, get a, 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 a scripture, it's going to be a type and shadow of what is to come, right? In other words, when you read a scripture like Ecclesiastes, chapter number nine, you also got to go over to, what is it, uh, Colossians, I think it's chapter number three. Three, I think I'm right. No, Philippians, I believe it is. Philippians chapter three. And, and the, the count, the, 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 the balancing part of this scripture I'm about to read in Ecclesiastes is found over in the New Testament. It basically says somewhat the same thing. So as a New Testament Christian, you want to be able to look back. The Bible says that those things which were written aforetime, they were written for examples that we can learn from. 
Not, not directly apply, but we can learn from it. Does that make sense? It's not like, you know, the Old Testament, you know, I'm, you're holding you, I'm holding you in the laws of God. No, no, it's not that. It's, I read it, I saw what God and how God dealt with the Israelites in the Old Covenant. Now let me turn to the New Covenant and see what God says. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is, we're reading this as an example. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Whatsoever thy hand find to do, do it with all your might. For there is no, no work, uh, there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave or when you die. That's what he's saying, when you, when you, when you die, okay? All right, so it's important for us to realize that we've got to find some things to do with our hands. If God blesses me with all spiritual blessings, time, talent, and means, I've got to be doing something. I can't be just sitting on it got to be doing something. And if God has, God has given me the capacity to teach his word, man, yeah, I got, I got to be out there on, the, on social media. I got to be out there. So I said, Pastor, you, you're just a talker. That's a, that's a talent and a gift. Everybody can't talk. Everybody can't talk. Well, he gave it to me. Why would, I, why would I be quiet? Now, am I quiet most of the time? Yes, most of the time throughout the day, I'm not saying nothing, right? Like today, I barely said nothing to a lot of people, barely said nothing to a lot of people. But when you showed up this evening, I had something to say. You, you got what I'm saying? All right? So, so for, for many of us, we don't realize that the, 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 the capacity and the ability to communicate is actually a gift. It's actually a gift. Because everybody should be able to communicate, but everybody cannot uh, effectively communicate. That's why you have trouble in relationships. Now, when I take the lowest common denominator of communication and I apply that to God's word, that if I'm a great communicator, then I apply it to God's word. That means I want other people to be able to hear and learn God's word. You see? So then what I do is I, I take all types of applications and use God's gift so that I may be able to bring him glory in certain spaces. Does that make sense? So when you start talking about your, your, your say your Instagram for instance, and you know, we, we love your Instagram, you got great pictures out there and all that, but when you gonna say something about God? Well, let me see on this side over here. You got a lot of beautiful pictures and handsome pictures out there. But at some point, you got to say something about God. Okay? Earth is the Lord's, full is thereof, they and all that dwell therein. Everything was made for him and by him, and by him do all things consist. Does that make sense? Okay? So, so I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have anything out in social media that doesn't honor God. Mm -mm, I don't have nothing. I don't, Pastor, you ain't got your own personal... That is my person. Would you see me talking about God? That's me personally. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Because when it was made, it was made for the purpose to be, watch this, and, and listen to me. I know people that we might not even know for real, for real, came up with social media platforms, this, that, and other. But, but listen to me. Just because they came up with them, they were the rank center, doesn't mean that it wasn't made to bring God glory. Now, granted, a lot of things are made to, 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 to uh, you know, take us off this planet and take away our lives. And, and, and even in that, those things were created to bring God glory. Men, sinful men, will take them, twist them, and turn them into things that doesn't bring God glory. Boy, that's powerful. Okay? All right. So let's, let's talk about uh, spending time with God. I gave you on, uh, I think it was Sunday, uh, second service, I gave you three things, three things in order to build and to grow your relationship with God. Number one, in the words. You have to be in the word. I, I don't understand how Christians think that they can skip this part, okay? You have to be in the word. You have to be in the word. You cannot, you know, what's the scripture say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You have to be Word focus. Now listen to me. I want you to hear this. Most of the word that you read every day is going to be for you. It's going to be for you. That's what, that's, what, that's what it's for. It's for you. Now, once you get it for real, 
And now you get a revelation of it, then God will use it for others. But the, the, the first hair, wig, whatever to get blown back is going to be yours. And after you fix your hair back, now you got a revelation of it, now you can share it with others. See? So that's important. So the reason why we get before God and we honor God with, the, with reading and studying his word and doing word study and all that comes along with being in the word, we do this for our own benefit so that through our own benefit, we can now, as the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, we can now edify the church. Not for our purpose, but for the, for the sole purpose of edifying the church. See? What do you say, Pastor? What do you mean by the church? Now remember, we're not talking about the, the gathering. We're talking about individual people who is the ecclesia. That's the Greek word for church. That's you and I as individual. We are the church. So the church is wherever you go. You are the church. Got it? We gather. We gather as a group of people. We are the church. Right? Some people say, well, Pastor, you know, the building is not the church. No, no. The building is owned by church people. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> God is not, listen, the church is not, yeah, you're right. It ain't in lights and the water and all that, but we own this. Do everybody understand that? Y'all looking like, Pastor, what, what you mean we own it? Yeah, all of us. If you's a Beza, if you's a Beza member of True Divine, you own this. <laughs> okay? <laughs> all of us come together and we have ownership. We have ownership, property and all that. That's, that's a part of, of the church. It is not the church. It is our collective ownership on behalf of, of God. Okay? All right. So the first thing is in the word, in the word. Make it a daily regimen. In the word. Second thing is worship and fellowship. Worship and fellowship. Have your time of worship and fellowship honoring God with your life. Okay? All right. So now, once you take time and add it to your talent or your gifts, it will equal good works. If you take time that's properly stewarded, okay? If you steward your time and then you add your time properly stewarded with your gifts properly stewarded, it will always equal good works. It always equal good works. You ain't got to worry about messing it up, it's coming out wrong, all that. Because you've stewarded your time and you've stewarded your gifts or your talents and listen to what the Bible says, it comes out to good works. Listen to what it says in Titus chapter 3 and verse number 8. Titus 3 and verse number 8. Listen to what it says. This is the faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto you. So notice what he says. He says, faithful saying, talking about stewardship, that when you and I who believe in God, we're going to maintain so that we equal out to good works. Everybody say good works. All right. So now, here's how it works on a ground level day-to-day -day perspective. All right. In the message, in the message Bible, uh, Romans chapter number 12, in the message. Okay. Now, this, is, this should be a part of your goal. This is, this, is, this is ground level stuff, part of your goal that when you get up every day, every day you get up, you're going to take all that you are in your life and lay it down before God as an offering. You're going to take every fiber of your being, everything you're responsible for, everybody you're responsible to, all, all, all that you've ever gained in the world, whether it be education, whether it be a, a, a car, house, land, business, you're going to take it every day, you're going to take it all of it and lay it before God as an offering. God, this is yours, and I want you to use my life today through all that you've given me to be a blessing to others. Now, listen to what it says in, in Romans chapter 12 in the message. And uh, verse number one. So here's what I want you to do with God helping you. 
Everybody say, God helping me. Now, it's going to take God's help. You're not going to be able to do it on your own. It's going to take God's help. It's going it's to take God's, God's help. Here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Now, take your everyday, ordinary life. Not your extraordinary life. Just your ordinary life. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Leave it on the screen, if you will, uh, for those in the media. Leave it on the screen. The scripture there. Let me ask you a question. Do you even have an ordinary life? If you and I could talk personally, could you explain to me what is an ordinary schedule for you every day? Things that you're going to do every day without any add-ons. Without any add-ons. Just every day, I have a routine. Do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. And I'm, I'm, I'm just about going to do it at this time. This at that time, and this at that time, this is that time. See, most people can't lay down an ordinary life because they ain't never discovered it. Boy, that's good. They can't lay it down because they never discovered it. They don't know what an ordinary life looks like. They're absent of an ordinary life. Their life is so full of, I'm going to get up tomorrow. What you going to do tomorrow? Oh, child, I don't know. But by the time they get up in the morning, boy, they, done been, they pile 10,000 things on their plate. And they're so scattered with the 10,000 things, they don't even get one thing done because they don't have an ordinary life. They don't have an ordinary life. I want to challenge you to discover an ordinary life. What's your ordinary life? Like, like tomorrow is Thursday. What do you generally, generally do on Thursday? What do you generally do on Thursday? Okay, let's go to Saturday. You say, I'm, I'm going to work tomorrow. That's all I'm Okay, let's go to Saturday. What does a general Saturday look like for you? Pastor, that's that my free day. No, it ain't free because you, you get up so open-ended you don't accomplish anything with the day. What is, what is ordinary for you? And until you discover ordinary, now remember, ordinary will be different in different seasons of your life, okay? So if, if you told me today, say, Pastor, I'm, I'm going to retire uh, uh, next month. I'm, I'm going to retire next month. Here's what I would challenge you to do. Go ahead and figure out now what ordinary is going to look like next month. Figure it out now before you get there what ordinary is going to look like. Otherwise, what happens is we pile on so much that, watch this, we leave God out of it. But planning what it looks like says that I'm going to include God in everything that I do. Even this change that's coming my way, I'm going to make sure that I have fellowship time with God and everything that God has given me throughout my lifetime, I'm going to use it for his glory. Okay, now, so we're going to take our everyday ordinary life. What does that look like, preacher? When you go to sleep, when you eat, when you go to work, and when, even when you're just walking around in life and you're going to place it before God as an offering. God, I'm just going to place this before you as an offering. I'm going to place it before you as an offering. Now listen, I'll give you a simple example. I, I, I don't know... Uh, if there's ever been a time since I became saved that I have not taken my plate and laid it down before the Lord as an offering. Even a bag of sweet heat barbecue chips. Lord bless it because my body going to need that blessing. <laughs> Even in the simplest fashion, Remember how we started? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And everything and everybody that dwells therein. He, God, is worthy to be thanked, not, not on the other side of it, but in advance to the other side. And then when you get to the other side, thank him on that side too. 
And when we do that, now we're developing a great and outstanding relationship between you and God, not just one that you feel, but one that you know is there. But not only that, you're now able to take all of that that you are in relationship with God and be able to say to somebody else, let me, let me, let me show you the, the, the path that I walked in order to get to this place that I am in, in God. All right, now how do we make application of this? So you apply, you apply all that you learn, all that you experience in your marriage, you apply it in your education, you apply it in employment, you apply it in business, you apply it in, in uh, uh, friendships, you apply it in parenting, and the list goes on and on and on, okay? The last thing I'll share with you t uh, tonight is uh, spend time practicing your gifts and your talents. Spend time practicing your gifts and your talents. Now, when I grew up, um, um, you know, church gifts and talents was kind of uh, relegated to uh, ushers, um, uh, nurses' guild. How many of y'all remember nurses' guild? Y'all remember that nurses' guild? Yeah, nurses guild, nurses guild, uh, missionary society, uh, the different choirs, you know, youth choir, uh, young adult choir, senior choir, male chorus. Um, you play the instrument, and, and then pastor or ministers of the gospel. Now, my context was very small, based on my church definition. I couldn't see God's massive greater kingdom because I couldn't see it on Sunday demonstrated. So hence, if, if you didn't sing in a choir, you had to be on an usher board as you was a youth. There wasn't no, there wasn't no sports teams because those gifts were left out. Women, women, they couldn't even come in the pulpit. If, if they were going to say something, they had a little, they had a little uh, announcement, pulled them on the floor. Well, you had to talk behind it. Rem talking good here. And so the context of gifts and talents was so small that a lot of people didn't think they belonged in church. Because the gifts and the talents that they were given by God were not valued and appreciated and accepted in the local church. Now, I'm going to tell you, now, this is one of the things that we try our hardest not to do here at True Divine, is to relegate the gifts, the callings, the anointings, and God's ability on your life to these small ideas of gifts in the church. Our responsibility is to be able to say to you, what is it that God has gifted you to do? And be able to embrace that gift so that you can use that gift and some gifts to edify the church. Because that's, that's why we have these gifts. All of our gifts together are to be used singularly and sometimes corporately to bless the church. Does that make sense? You know, uh, 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 Sunday, Sunday, I believe it was Sunday, we had uh, uh, Miss uh, Pam Williams, she's our uh, uh, director of um, our Community Development Corporation, and, and uh, she came up and talked about uh, the uh, food pantry that she, listen to me carefully, she and all the seniors <laughs> that serve with her, the community, I went down there one day and I said, man, all these people, uh, 70 something. And they were all there to serve the community. All of them were there to serve the community. They, they, they giving out boxes and, and, and at one point they were doing the, the, the trunk drive through where they just, they, they would shop for the people and put it in the back of the, of the trunk. And, and, and watch this, when I grew up in church, that wasn't happening. That wasn't happening. Mm, church people were eating the food. We were eating, we were eating the food every uh, uh, anniversary. <laughs> we were eating the food. That wasn't happening then. 
But we as a church now, I believe it, I want you to hear this. We as a church, when I say we as a church, I'm not just talking about true divine, I'm talking about the body of Christ. We're at a place now where people, your gifts can be well received in the body of Christ so that you can fulfill what God's purpose is for your life. That you don't have to always uh, 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 numb or, 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 or pull yourself back because other people uh, think that you got some type of motive. No, every one of us have a gift. I'm going to read the scripture in a minute about it. every one of us have gifts and abilities. It's up to those that are already in the body of Christ to appreciate and value people's gifts. Does that make sense? Okay, that's important. All right, so on the screen here, there's all types of spiritual gifts there on the screen. I, I brought some that uh, um, in my notes that may be a little bit outside the box of your traditional idea of, of gifts. For instance, those who have are, are artistic abilities, artistic talent like painting, drawing, and sculpting, musical abilities like playing an instrument and singing, athletic ability like sports and physical activities, uh, leadership skills, organizing and motivating others, communication skills like public speaking or writing, writing books, writing materials, writing, 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 all right? Problem solving abilities. Not everybody can solve a problem. Not everyone has the gift of being analytical or an analytical thinker and creative. Empathy and having emotional intelligence. Now, I'm gonna tell you that empathy and emotional intelligence I mean, I didn't even know the word, the two words emotional intelligence was together until I took a class online. I had no idea. A lot of you have been in trainings about emotional intelligence. We, we've got, I'm going to tell, tell you how much I fell in love with emotional intelligence. Once I took this one class, I think it was a class in psychology, and I learned about uh, 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 emotional intelligence, I, I called my wife. I said, hey, uh, y'all do this over at uh, MPS? She started laughing. I said, what you laughing for? Yeah, we've been, we've been, you know how folks are when they've when they been through several training. We've been doing that. What? You ain't never told me about that? And what I discovered, what I discovered was in, in, in our culture as a church, sometimes we do not have emotional intelligence. We're, we're not God spiritual, we're just spiritual. And we never try to find out where people are coming from. You know, when, you, when somebody, uh, um, male or female, come in and they may not be dressed like you dress, nobody ever asks the question or have concern enough on the why. The why. They, they could have got saved last week and they ain't finna go out and buy no $10,000 worth of clothes. Got it? But most of us never consider it. So what, I, what I've done, what I've done, I have a, uh, a team, a team that's come in on uh, every other third Sunday after the second service. We have a training for all of our leaders on emotional intelligence, okay? But there are people who are gifted in that. So try next time when you can't understand somebody, go get with somebody who you know can understand everybody. They got emotional intelligence, okay? and then have them to kind of work out your differences. It's a gift. Not everybody possesses it, but everybody should know it and appreciate it and value the fact that, that, that each of us should at least experience some level of emotional intelligence. Uh, number eight, uh, having technical proficiency. Not everybody is in programming and engineering, culinary skills, cooking, baking. I'm gonna tell you, I, I just, that one, Whenever God gave that one, I, I was not at school that day. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't there. Gardening and nutrition, uh, nutrition uh, uh, I'm sorry, gardening and nurturing plants, teaching and monitor, uh, mentoring, I'm sorry, teaching and mentoring, adaptability and resilience, organizational skills, um, uh, mechanical aptitude, fixing things and uh, building. All of those that I just read, plus those that you see on the screen, plus more and more and more are a part of God's gifting to the body. They're not just relegated to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 are spiritual gifts that go along 
with the gifts that God has given you to be able to operate and function. See, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, uh, all those that, that work of the 12 are granted unto us so that we can actually work out uh, or work with these gifts that God has given us in a natural sense, okay? All right, now what are the purpose of all of these gifts? What's the purpose of, of, of all, all of these gifts? The purpose of all of these gifts is to help others grow. That's the purpose. The purpose is you're going to grow by relationship with God. Now, how can I help other people grow by my gifts and my talents so that they may also edify God? Okay? Every gift, every talent, every ability that you have was given to you by God. You know, my wife, before I came out to um, uh, teach this lesson tonight, my wife was telling me about one of the young ladies in our church, um, how that uh, she wanted to do a uh, um, um, uh, educational summer with our children, uh, teaching them uh, how to uh, uh, develop their reading skills. Okay? Now, this young lady is educated in this field. But notice what she wants to do. I want to take my gift and I want to give back. That, that's, I can't tell you something that's more beautiful than that, more uh, a, 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 an, a, an exemplifier of Christ than, than to say to yourself, I know my gifts, I know my talents, I know my abilities, and thank you, God, that you've given them to me. Now, how can I use this in your kingdom to benefit the others that you send my way. How can I do that? How can I do that? Now, granted, now I want y'all to hear this because this is good. Now, this is going to be good. Every one of us came through a season of receiving from a gift. A lot of us now in the body of Christ are in the position of giving from what we receive. Got it? Got it? I can't help but show up, preach, teach, train, mentor, do counseling sessions. Why preach? Why do you show up like that? Preacher, can't you give it over to somebody else? I can and I do sometimes, but the majority of the time I have to show up because it's my corresponding reaction to how God benefited my life. He, he benefited me so much. I, 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 I wish I could go back and just show you a movie of where I was and so that you can understand the glory that came along with the story. But it, it was God taking a multiplicity of people over time to bring me to the now. And I not respond by giving back, by saying, God, thank you. Oh, you're so good to me. Oh, you're so good to me. And my response to your goodness is to take everything that you've given me and I want to give it back. Everything. I'm not talking about some of it. I'm talking about everything. you good in a subject matter where education is concerned, give back in that area. you good working with your hands, give back in that area. Do, do this, do this. Now, if you do this, I promise you it's going to turn out to your benefit. Give of whatever you have expecting nothing in return. The scripture says this. He says, if that's, that's one, give expecting in return. That's one scripture. The other one says, he that lends to the poor or gives to the poor, I'm sorry, gives to the poor, he lends unto the Lord. I used to say back in the day, and you know God going to pay his bills. Got it? Got it? So, let us not just be in a position of receiving. You should in certain instances, but not in all instances. But let us not only be receivers from the gifts, but let us jump in with our gifts and add to the giving of those gifts. Got it? You know, you know, Pastor, you know, I've been singing since I was a child. Praise team practice every Thursday night. Every Thursday night they practice. They'll be here tomorrow. 6.30, I believe it is. I don't know what time it is, but anyway. They'll be here tomorrow. 
They'll be here practicing. Pastor, you know, I, you know, I, 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 uh, I've always been, been an organizer. They need somebody to help them organize. You know what I'm saying? You just be the organizer. Pastor Benita would love you to come in and help her just with the administration. You know, we sit in here, we see all these wonderful uh, productions that our arts put on. I mean, they'd be wonderful. I mean, it takes time and all that. And, 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 but when you go behind the scene, they have any production. They got, they got folks that, that uh, got degrees in, 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 in the uh, arts. They point and go here and go there and boom, boom, boom. They, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a big working machine behind the scenes. And all y'all see is what's out here on the stage. You got me? Now, when are you going to add to it? Adding value with whatever gifts you have, whatever abilities that God has given you, you should be able to add it so that it brings God glory. I got two scriptures I want you to hear, okay? All right, now listen to this. In Romans chapter number 12, and uh, let's, let's start at verse number four. For as many... Uh, as, uh, for, as, for as we have many members in one body and all members are not the same office, have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. And he says, all of us are interconnected. All of us, all of us. Let me, let me show you the beauty of it, right? So on Sunday mornings, you get an opportunity to see the demonstration of that text on Sunday mornings, right? So you, 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 you come in and we got ministers up praying. When you first come in, if you come on time, somebody say, well, Pastor, I ain't seen no minister up prayer. That means you're late now. You got to be here on time. So they start every, 15 minutes before every service, we have corporate prayer. Where our ministers come up and lead the court congregation, prayer in their heart to receive the word, receive worship. They do corporate prayer. That's, that's a set of ministries that happens there. And then after that, uh, right at the top of the hour, the praise and worship team, they come out, come out on the platform, and they do a handoff. They go from prayer into the worship. It's, a hand, it's seamless. It's a handoff. One comes out to tell the other one to shut up and sit down. So when, when that person up here praying, right, when they, when they praying, they see that praise and worship come out, they, they pray, the team come out, they already know it's time for me to quit. Right? And so that person walks off, they hand it off to the praise and worship team. Praise and worship team does, I think, a couple of songs, and then at that point, Pastor Hill's going to come out that door, he's going to come out, and he's going to do the announcement. They're interconnected. He finishes the announcement, he turns it back to them, they do that one standing alone song, and as they're singing, when they're about finished, you see me come out and stand right there. They walk off, y'all see me coming right behind. It's all interconnected. Now, you, in that moment, you've experienced numerous gifts in those moments, all right? Now, I preach the sermon, blah, 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 blah. And when I preach, the, I have to get through preaching the sermon, and the moment I give the invitation, you see the praise team come up behind me. Now, you say, well, Rem, why they coming up here before? They coming up here because Rem ain't finna sing. Rem ain't finna sing. Why? That's, their, that's what they do. That's their gifts. That's their talent. That's their ability. Not mine. I'm a communicator of the word. Their responsibility, sing, lead in worship, blah, blah, blah. Got it? All right? So now, the ministers come down before us down here to greet people, or even if they want immediate prayer, those ministers are prepared and, and properly ready. So you've got three, three sets of gifts at the end of the worship service. You've got one on the altar, you've got me, then you've got the praise and worship team. We're four, and then you've got your band back here. And all of us are working in unison to bring forth God's very, very best. That's what that scripture is saying. It's what it's talking about here. He says, for we being many, verse five, for we being many are one body in Christ. Everyone members one of another. Everyone members one of another. Interconnected. Got it? We just hadn't had you be added in yet, but we, the Lord working, he working. Verse six, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, there's a different gift. You don't have the same. You don't have the same. Listen, you can have vocal abilities. You can have vocal abilities and it's still not be the same. We have, we have some people on our praise team, all they do is back up. All they do, back up. That's, that's according to the proportion of faith. That's what the Bible talks about. 
That's all they do. They're good at it. Holding the back. Hold it up. And then you have your leaders. Got it? Those that can lead. All right, now watch what the scripture says. Watch what the scripture says. He says that those, difference are, those are different. And he goes into some of the spiritual gifts. Whether you, you, you prophesy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, verse, verse 7, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teaches on teaching, and that is to spend time with your gift. Spend time, wait on it, and spend time with your gift. Now, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4, and I'm going to do this one in the uh, Amplified. I'm going to do this one in the Amplified, okay? All right, here we go. I'm at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9 to verse number 11, and I'm almost done. Listen to what it says in verse 10. Just as each of you, each one of you, has received a special gift. Everybody say a special gift. Say it again, a special gift. A special gift. That is, in the brackets, a spiritual talent, an ability graciously given by God. Just as all of us have received a special gift, that is, a spiritual talent, an ability graciously given to us by God. Now, what should I do with that gift that God has graciously given unto us? He says, the next word, he says, employ it. Put it to work for you. Employ it in serving who? One another. As, again in the bracket, as it is, as is a, a appropriate for good stewards of God's multifaceted grace. Not, God doesn't have just a grace. His grace is multifaceted. It's, it's capable of working through all of our gifts, all of our talents. And then he says again in the brackets, faithfully using the diverse, varied gifts and abilities granted to Christians by God's unmerited favor. Then he says this in verse 11. Whoever speaks to the congregation is to do so as one who speaks to oracles, utterances, the very words of God. Whoever serves, that is the congregation, is to do as one who serves by the strength which God's abundance, uh, uh, abundantly supplies so that in all things God may be glorified, honored, and magnified through Jesus Christ to whom be, uh, belongs the glory, dominion, and the power forever. Amen. All right, now I want to do one more thing, one more thing, one more scripture. I got, I got to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. All right, so if y'all will, just put this one up on the, uh, on the screen. I'm going to read it from the Bible, Bible. All right, so now I want you to listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 are all the spiritual gifts. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it tells you how to function those gifts, and that is through love. And then it, chapter 14 tells you how these gifts operate and function in a church environment, okay? And he says this, he starts off, he says, now follow after charity, that is love, and yes, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that's prophesied speaketh unto men to what? Edification, exhortation, and comfort. That's what it means to prophesy. It means to edify, it means to exhort, and it means to comfort. Verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesies, what does he do? What does he do? Edifies the church. Then verse 5 says, I would that you all spoke with tongues, but rather that you may prop, that ye prophesied, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret. Watch this: that the church may receive what? Edifying, edifying. That, this is the sole purpose of why God gifted all of us, is so that we could take those gifts, those callings, those abilities, and do what with them, preacher, so that we can take them all and edify the body of Christ. We can edify the body of Christ. Now, hence comes the challenge. What are you doing to help people grow? What are you doing to help people grow? And I want to challenge you to sit down with yourself, including God in that conversation while you're sitting, and ask the Lord, Lord, help me. What can I do with the gifts and the talents and the abilities you've given me? 
so that your kingdom may receive glory. And I promise you, God's going to be faithful to answer you and to help you bring it all to pass. Father, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for time to minister to your people. We ask that you will bless them and keep them and sustain them. We ask you that you will grow them and cause them to be great and, and notable stewards, faithful stewards over all that you've given unto us, over your manifold grace. By your grace, we have been effectively equipped and we've been called out from the darkness of the world into your marvelous light. Now, Father, help us to help others grow and then help us and give us people in our lives to help us grow so that we can become interconnected with all of our gifts and our abilities so that the church may receive edifying and that you will receive the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you in every way. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everybody.